we live in a three-dimensional world. That should be no surprise. But so many people are curious if there's a fourth dimension which we just can't access. It's common to view time as the fourth dimension, and there's definitely some truth to that, and we'll talk about that today. But I want to give you some intuition about how to view the word dimension, and ultimately give us a visualization of the fourth dimension. Just so we're on the same page here, let's go over the definition of dimension. It's easy to understand, it's simply just a measurable extent of some kind. Using this definition, we can look at this cube and determine its dimensions. The obvious ones are the length, the width, and the height. But some other properties that we could measure, for example, would be the color, or if it was a physical object, the temperature, or definitely the shape. But this means that when we're looking at this cube, we're viewing it as a six-dimensional object. But there's one problem. Not many of us think of a cube as a six-dimensional object. Well, at least I think of a cube as a three-dimensional object. You know, an object with a length, a width, and a height. The way we're going to distinguish these measurements from other measurements such as time or color is we're going to call these spatial dimensions. And ultimately what I want to do for you today is try to visualize the fourth spatial dimension. In order to do that, we're going to start with a zero-dimensional object and work our way up. A zero-dimensional object is simply just a point. A point where you can't move left or right, you're just stuck in exactly one place. In other words, if we're at this point, there are zero directions in which we can travel. Now one way we can use this to create a one-dimensional object is by duplicating this zero-dimensional object and connecting these two vertices by an edge. Notice now that if you're on one of these vertices, there's exactly one direction in which you can travel. That means this is a one-dimensional object. Now the important thing to note here is that the points are the places where you can live and the edges represent the directions in which you can travel. Now to create a two-dimensional object from this, we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to duplicate this one-dimensional object and connect the corresponding vertices. I think the majority of people look at a square and think, yeah, that's a two-dimensional object. But the important thing for us is that if we're living at any one of these points, we can travel in exactly two directions, and that's what makes it two-dimensional for us. Now to transfer to the third dimension, we're going to again duplicate our two-dimensional object and connect the corresponding vertices. We now have, at each point, exactly three directions in which we can travel. I hope you're able to predict at this point how we're going to construct the fourth dimension, because we're going to use the same process as we've been using this whole time. We're going to duplicate this three-dimensional object and connect the corresponding edges. Some people call this a four-dimensional cube, and others call it a tesseract. I like the word tesseract just because it sounds cool, so we're going to be using that. Notice that at each point on the tesseract, we're allowed to travel in exactly four directions. I like to think the outside cube is our current world, and the inside cube is some other world that you can access through a portal, but that might be a little bit too science fiction for everybody. However you choose to look at this cube is up to you, but regardless, it's cool to look at. Well, that's all I have for you today, so I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope to see you soon.